Hey, grade 12s. So in the previous two videos, we discussed finding the first derivative using first principles, which you'll definitely get in, the, in an exam for about six marks. We then went on to finding the first derivative using the shortcut method, also about six marks. And now we are on uh, question C, uh, which is where we are going to work with graphs. Okay, so I've prepared two questions that I'm just going to work through with you. Um, excuse my handwriting. And the first one says, given that fx is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18. Okay, firstly, calculate the coordinates of the turning points, something you'll have to work out in just about every calculus graph question. Okay, so turning points, we need to first find out the first derivative of our function. So the first mark you'll get is to notice that the first derivative is what? 3x squared minus 8x minus 3. Okay, now at the turning points or the stationary points, the first derivative, which tells you the gradient at a point, will be equal to zero. So you will get a mark for saying that the first derivative is equal to naught at the turning points, is equal to that, which we can now factorize using quadratic trinomial. Okay, if we know this from back in the day, you're going to have 3x and x. You now have to know where the 3 goes, so you're going to have 3 over there, minus 3 and a plus one over there. So if I factorize or rather multiply this out, hopefully I'll get back to my question. Let's quickly check, check here. 3x times x, 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x, plus another x is negative 8x, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Okay, so that's how we factorize. That means that the x values are either negative a third or x equals 3. Okay, so now if you want the coordinates of the turning points, we now substitute in x equals negative third and x equals three into our original question, okay, in our original function. And the way I like to do it, and I don't know if the screen will pick it up for you, is I like setting it up like as so, watch. Bracket, bracket to the power three, minus four, bracket, bracket to the square, minus three, bracket, bracket, plus 18. Okay, so I've almost just got it ready for me to now substitute in. And now we're going to go minus a third, minus a third, and one more, minus a third. Okay, so I've substituted in minus a third, and I'm going to get a horrible number, 500 over 27, or let's just keep it here at 18,52. Okay, so in other words, f of negative a third left us with 18,52, making the coordinate of this turning point negative a third and 18,52. You're welcome to use it as 500 over 27 if you'd like to, but I have chosen not to. And on this side, you've got f of 3 equals, and now this is why I can just go back and edit my question and delete all the negative a thirds and replace it with 3. And I'm going to do it over there as well. Replace it with a 3. And this one here, replace it with a 3 equals, and I'm going to get 0. Okay, so that makes that turning point 3 and 0. Okay, so you've worked out your first derivative, and you've made it equal to 0, and now you've got your two, two turning points, 1 and 2. Number B, sketch the graph showing the turning points and the intercepts with the axes. Okay, so we've got the two turning points. Let's just say turning point 1 is negative a third and 18,52. We've got turning point 2, which is 3 and naught. What would the y-intercept be? To find the y-intercept, make x naught. So naught, naught, naught. The y-intercept would be 18. So the y-int is going to be what, what, for, what for x? Naught for x and 18. To find the x-intercept or intercepts, we're going to have to work with our original function there and make y equal to naught. So this is where I'm going to do some working. Naught is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18. Okay, now the way we're going to have to factorize this is we're going to have to find a value that when substituted in to all the x positions gives zero. Okay, this is what we call the factor theorem. So if we find, let's say, that 1 when substituted in here gives naught, that means that x minus 1 would be a factor. Okay, and largely this takes a bit of guesswork to substitute values in until we get naught. So if I go back into my 
answer there, we already know that when I substituted in 3, right, it's still on my screen, when I substituted in 3, I got, what, 0. We know that because one of our turning points was 3 and 0. So if 3 and 0 is a turning point, it must also be an x-intercept because it's on the x-axis. So instead of now starting from scratch, we can say, therefore, that one factor that goes into this function of ours would be x minus 3. Okay. Now that means there's a leftover bracket with stuff that is left. x times what will get us back to x cubed? x squared. Negative 3 times what? will get us to positive 18, negative 6, right? Now, this middle term is the hardest of the, of the terms here. If we need to get negative 4x squared, we've already got negative 3x squared, if I, if I times that out. That means that this x times this x must generate another negative x squared, mean, meaning that this is simply going to be a negative 1 I guess, x. Okay, let's just show you again. Negative 3 times this x squared would have given you negative 3x squared. x times another negative x is another negative x squared. So negative 3x squared minus another x squared would have given me negative 4x squared. Another way to check is we must also have negative 3x from timesing out. So x times negative 6 is negative 6x. And then negative 3 times negative x is positive 3x. So you've got negative 3, uh, 6x plus 3x is negative 3x. So we've correctly factorized that. What we need to do now is to realize that this bracket here can further factorize into another two brackets. That would be x minus 3 and x plus 2. And this shouldn't be a surprise that x minus 3 is appearing twice. Why? Because whenever a turning point is on the x-axis, you will see that it appears twice when we come to factorize it. Okay, so our x-intercepts, therefore, if we want to write them there, are 3 and 0. And if x plus 2 was a factor, then the other x-intercept is negative 2 and 0. So we've got everything we need now to go and draw our graph. And it has to just be, it doesn't have to be beautiful, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as we label all the turning points and the intercepts. So, first of all, the turning points. Negative a third and 18,52 is going to be up top here. We negative x value and we up high there for the 18,52. So, negative a third, 18,52. Mine's not going to be beautiful, but just make it as clear as you can. Right, the second turning point is 3 and naught, which would be anywhere about here. And that is 3 and 0. The y-intercept is 0 and 18. So there's 18,52. So we're just going to be a little bit lower than that. And if we want to label that 0 and 18, they will give you graph paper. X-intercepts, we've already labeled the 3 and 0. And the second x-intercept is negative 2 and 0. There's negative a third. So negative 2, let's say, is around about over there. Negative 2 and 0. So we're now ready to connect the dots. There we go. We've joined the one, two, three dots. We're going to go down there. And this is also a turning point, so it's going to be turning. And there we go. Remember to also label it fx. You can write out the whole function's name if you'd like. Um, I guess you could say that's the x, that's the y axis. Okay, so there we have our cubic graph, having labeled everything we needed to. Okay, so now we move to question C, maybe a little interpretation question based on our graph. And they often... They can be quite tricky. Let's see what this one says. For which value or values of x will x times the first derivative be smaller than 0? In other words, be negative. Okay? So, firstly, we are going to have to take the first derivative, have a value for it. Oh, let's, let's say, what does the first derivative tell you again? Let's remind ourselves. It tells you the gradient of the tangent to the curve. To the left of this side, all the gradients will be positive gradients, positive gradients, positive gradients. At this stage, the gradient will be totally flat, will be zero, remember? And then on this side, it's going to be negative gradients, negative gradients. Here, negative gradients, negative gradients, totally flat gradient, and then back to being positive gradients, 
right? Because they're straight lines. Remember straight line gradients. Okay, so we need to find the place where we're going to have a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative because ultimately we need a negative answer when you multiply them. So watch carefully here. In this area here, all the gradients are positive, but the x values are negative. So the x values there are negative, but the gradients are all positive. So what's a positive times a negative? A negative. So we are going to be happy when x is smaller than negative a third. Right. At negative a third, your gradient is zero, right, of your tangent. So we're not going to be, not, we're not going to be negative there. Afterwards, all the gradients are negative. But what happens here? Well, let's go look there as well. There's, there's a negative, right, a negative gradient. But our x values there are also negative. So what's a negative times a negative? A positive. We want negative. Okay. After here, we've got negative gradients, negative gradients, but our, our x values are positive. So from here to here, x values are positive, but the gradients are negative. That means or between naught and 3, we're also going to be happy because our x values are all positive, but our gradients are negative. After 3, we've got positive x values and positive gradients, so we're not going to want that side of the, of the graph. Okay, so you've got two elements to your answer for number C. Go carefully with these. They can be quite tricky. I'm going to do one more example of graph questions in the next video.